Hi, good morning everybody. Welcome to Falkirk Vineyard Church Online. It is great to have you with us. Um, I hope that you will feel encouraged uh, by the time you have finished with us today. Um, so my name is Estelle McKean and the way that this is going to work is uh, Andrew and Shanna are going to do the worship in a little minute once I've given you some announcements. And then uh, Andrew McNinch, one of our pastors, he's going to um, give us a word. And then uh, we will move straight into our Zoom call as part of our service. I'll give you some information about joining that in a little minute. Um, so the announcements I have to remember are that, number one, uh, the uh, FB Kids video is available. The service is available this morning. Um, they do one every week. They're brilliant, hilarious, great fun and such a good opportunity for kids to get together, um, albeit virtually, and uh, learn more about Jesus, which is just great. Um, now, the second thing is the Zoom call is part of our service. To get the link for the Zoom call, visit the Falkirk Online church Falkirk Vineyard online platform the church platform um, and the link will be shared in the chat there and you just click on that and it'll magically take you to a zoom room and uh, yeah where we will meet together and chat and there's the opportunity to get some prayer uh, as well if that's something you'd be interested in you can go into a breakout room if you like and someone will pray for you which yeah is just yeah, I find it really encouraging. I love the Zoom chats um, as part of the service. They're just great. Um, and then the third thing, very exciting, on the 27th to the 29th of January, we're having the National Vineyard National Gathering. And um, yeah, it's just going to be an incredible opportunity to meet with churches from around the UK in the vineyard movement, which is just, yeah, it's going to be amazing. So uh, we have a video about that just now. In 2020, the world changed. We were told to distance and we all felt the pain. Buildings shut, schools were closed, pubs boarded up and employees furloughed. Families and friends across the nations forced into lockdowns and isolation. The vulnerable shielded, hiding away, lonely, isolated for yet another day. We loved, we lost, we grieved. Life was hard, it still is, but we continue to believe. We persevered, we fixed our eyes on him. Jesus Christ, forever our King. We stepped out in worship just like we were taught to feed the hungry and clothe the poor. We preached the gospel, the love of Christ. As we all came together, one body, one mind, we all played our part. We learned how to do church online, innovating, creating time after time. God showed up in power, healing over Zoom. We encountered his presence right here in our rooms. People were baptized in baths and oceans as they met God's loves and their eyes were open. He inhabited our hearts, our lives, our homes. It didn't matter that our buildings were closed. Homes became hosts of church services. Dining tables became discipleship spaces. Alpha courses and small groups meeting on screens. More people attended than we've ever seen. You see, the church is still open. Our King is alive. In Him we hope, we trust, we rely. And so we gather for more churches, all homes to be trained, equipped, inspired, and to learn, to hear from God for the next leg of our race, for this moment, for this time, come and take your place. Okay, so very exciting. What an opportunity. It's going to be brilliant. Um, the way that it'll work is we can actually 
go together virtually because if you jump onto the Falkirk Vineyard Church platform, we're going to be showing the main sessions and that's on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday night and then the Thursday and Friday morning. Um, and it's just going to be, it's going to be brilliant because we're going to be able to worship together, pray together, praise together, learn together. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's going to be brilliant. Um, and then there are also seminars that you can sign up to, um, which are also going to be just so informative. They are, you can sign up to them at vineyardgathering.com. Um, and that, all that information you can find on, uh, falkirkvineyard.com forward slash what's on. And then, yeah, that's, I think that's all the things I need to remember. Um, I don't know what your week has been like, but the last few weeks have been quite tough hasn't it? <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, it's just really amazing to remember who we have our hope in. And I always find that the more I learn about God and who he is, um, the easier it gets to trust him. Because when you know who you're trusting, when you know who you're putting your hope in, yeah, I, I personally find that it uh, just gets a lot easier. So I want, I want to pray for us just now. Um, and I'm going to start by reading a little passage that just reminds us of who it is that we have our hope in. Okay, uh, this is Colossians 1, and I'm going to start from verse 15. <laughs> he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. What an incredible God we put our hope in. I'm going to pray. God, thank you so much uh, that we have the opportunity to meet together. Thank you uh, that you are with us. Um, we ask that you would open our hearts and our minds to teach us more about who you are and about who we are in you. We ask that you would be brought honour and glory as we meet together um, and yeah, we just offer it to you as a gift. In Jesus' name, Amen. Over to Shanna and Andrew.
today. Um, this morning I would like to talk to you about prayer or more accurately I want to talk to you about 
praying. So why don't we begin today by praying? So let me pray and it'd be great if you could kind of pray along with me, like kind of engage with what I'm saying and even say amen or yes God um, to what I'm saying. So Father, thank you Lord for bringing us together today. Thank you for our church. Thank you for the fellowship um, and the support Lord and the community that we have together. Our prayer today is that you be with us in a mighty way. God, would you be everything that we need? Would you speak to us? Would you teach us? Would you challenge us? Um, and would you forgive us, Lord, for any failings or flaws, Lord, that we are um, presenting, Lord, before you in our lives right now? God, we want to be a people who are fit for purpose, who are ready, willing and able to do um, the things that you have planned for us to do. So this morning, Lord, we ask for your presence with us um, and to remain with us throughout our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so do you pray? And if you do pray, why do you pray? And if you don't pray, why do you not pray? Jesus said this um, in his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 7. He said, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be open." I want to put some emphasis on the phrase that Jesus uses here when he says, keep on, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. You know, this is a, a theme and a message that we find throughout scripture. Paul, um, in his writing or his letter to the, the Thessalonian church said, said this in 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, he said, always be joyful, never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. In the message version, it puts it like this. It says, be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. No matter, sorry, thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you who belong to Christ Jesus to live. Most of us, I guess, are likely to admit that we don't pray enough. And how many of you um, could say that you are satisfied with your prayer lives? In Matthew 7, Jesus promises to respond to our prayers, if, but only if we pray. That makes sense, doesn't it? So Jesus promises to respond to our prayers if we pray. So my question is, if God is going to respond to our prayers, why don't we ask for things? Or why don't we ask more? Do we not ask because we don't trust God? I mean, these words that Jesus speaks in these verses clearly say that he will respond if we ask. Let's look at Matthew 7 verse 7 again. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. I wonder, do we not ask because things are going well in our lives? Or do we not ask because things aren't going so well in our lives? In these verses, Jesus is laying out a truth. And that truth is that God wants to give us things. So if that's the case, if God wants to give us things, why doesn't he just give us it all then? Why do we have to go through um, the process of prayer. Well, St. Augustine puts it like this. He said this, God wants to give us something, but cannot because our hands are full. There's nowhere for him to put it. You know, when we come to God, you know, we should be presenting him with empty hands, ready to receive what he has given for us. If our lives are consumed with our stuff, and um, our preferences and the things that we want or the things that we think are best, 
What space is there for God to give us anything? So when we come to God in prayer, let's come with open hands, um, ready, prepared and expectant to receive. C.S. Lewis talks about prayer like this. He says, do you think that we regard God as an airman regards his parachute? It's there for emergencies, but he hopes he'll never have to use it. You know, isn't that the case sometimes that we use God as our kind of 999? That it's only in times of great need or desperation that we turn to him. But Jesus is encouraging us here to keep on, to continually pray, continually ask, continually seek and continually knock on God's door for the things that we need. Maybe you don't ask because you're too busy doing stuff. Maybe even busy doing good things. But it doesn't matter what we're doing, good, bad or indifferent. God demands of us our prayers. God wants us to communicate with him. I read recently a, a story um, about a, a pastor in South Korea who was the leader of a large church. And um, his name was Billy Kim. And in 1960, as a young man, Billy Kim um, began working in a church in the city of Suwon, South Korea. And when he became part of that church, there were 10 members of that church. He retired in 2004 with a membership of over 15,000 members. This was a guy who had worked well for God and it was very obvious to see the fruit of his labour. But at the time of his retirement, he said this about his time in ministry, about his time leading the church. He said this, if I had to do it all over, I would do more praying and less preaching. I just find that a fascinating reflection on what this guy had achieved. I mean, how could it be? Isn't preaching a high calling? Surely Billy Kim's preaching to grow a church from 10 to 15,000 is, is evidence that his preaching had produced so much fruit. But as much as we can say that preaching brings fruit, it can't um, produce fruit without prayer because prayer is the most fruitful activity we can take part in. You see, when we preach, when we talk, people listen. But when we pray, God listens. When we preach, people respond and act to what we're saying. But when we pray, it's God who acts and responds. And faith-inspired prayer, faith-inspired prayer can change the world. In Matthew 17, Jesus uh, says this. He says, you don't have enough faith. Or I wonder if he's asking that as a question. You don't have enough faith? I tell you the truth, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say this to the mountain, move from here to there and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. So when we speak to God and when we ask him for things, what is it that happens? What is it that God does? In 2 Chronicles 7, God responds um, to King Solomon. Um, he responds directly to his prayer. And, and in um, this prayer, he makes a statement that is well widely known. Um, and we were um, speaking, or I was certainly speaking on this uh, verse in this passage uh, a year ago when we were considering um, what it would mean or what it would take for God to send revival. And God says this in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. He said, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, this is what God will do. I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. When we pray, God doesn't say that he might hear, that he might forgive, that he might heal. No, God says that he will hear from heaven, he will forgive their sin, and he will heal their land. So if that being the case, why don't we ask God for more? Because when we ask, revival comes. 
when we ask, souls are saved. And when we ask, there is healing. You know, God may not always answer our prayers on our timetable and in our terms, but he does answer if we pray. Wouldn't it be terrible to wake up in eternity to discover God intended to save a soul or bring a great revival, but was thwarted by our lack of prayer? In Matthew 13, we learn about the role of our faithful prayers and our, or, or our faith in general in, in the miracles of Jesus, where it says uh, in Matthew 13, 58, he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. And James um, says this in James chapter 4, verse 2, you do not have what you want because you don't ask God for it. Is it possible that God is waiting for us to pray before he acts? Is it possible that we could be too late sometimes with our prayers? I don't know if that's the case or not, but I do know that faith and urgency are a big part of prayer. So maybe calling on God as soon as possible is always a good idea. I mean, why is prayer often our last resort instead of our first option? And how long do we have to wait before we call on God to help us? In our passage today in Matthew 7, Jesus is instructing us, commanding us even, to never stop praying. And we know, don't we, that we should be praying for all things. Philippians 4 and 6, we know it well. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. You know, God is the only one who is qualified to know your heart. And he will always make a fair and just decision on the requests that you ask of him. Maybe you picture God as like a, a, someone who's, a, who's very angry, who sits up on high and can't wait to throw lightning bolts at anyone who messes up. And in a way we can often picture God like that or, or as a stern father, uh, one of those children must be seen and not heard kind of parents that if you actually dared ask them for something, you got a mouthful of angry words. But that isn't who God is. When it comes to asking God for things, we shouldn't be reluctant. The reality is that God's heart for you is soft, compassionate, and he is eager with his love. Now, that doesn't mean that God is a pushover, that he just does what we ask. God isn't someone we can manipulate or coerce. I just want to briefly talk to you about something and, and I need you to listen to this very carefully because I don't want you to take out of context or misunderstand what I'm saying. So if, if you've not been paying attention, this is a good time to sit up. We have to keep in mind that in our sin, our sin, well, let me explain that again. We have to keep in mind that sin causes separation from God. And this separation caused by sin has made it so that God cannot hear us when we pray. The prophet Isaiah talks about this. He says this in Isaiah 51, listen, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is his ear too deaf to hear you call. So we know God listens, God hears us. But it's your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. Our sin is a problem and that is not good news. But there is good news because there is one communication that God always hears and that is the prayer from a repentant heart that asks for salvation and forgiveness. And once that prayer goes up, that heartfelt, repentant prayer to God, then he hears everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Jesus said this in John 14, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name 
and I will do it. In these words, Jesus is revealing that there are two reasons why God's people are here on earth. First of all, to, bl- to bring glory to God by being transformed into his image. And secondly, we are here to become an active part of sharing God's love for the world. Anything we ask that falls in line with these two things, the glorification of God or sharing um, in his mission for the world, and, or his, or the, the mission of his love for the world, then anything we ask it falls in line with these two things then God is ready, able and willing to do. So do you believe that God has your best interests in mind? Do you believe that God can be trusted to answer your prayers? As humans, we instinctively don't believe that and we haven't since the Garden of Eden. In the garden, Satan's ploy was to convince Eve um, that she could, she, that, or to convince Eve of self salvation uh, and self reliance. But the truth is that the absence of prayer brings the presence of self reliance. And do you believe that God loves you no matter what? Do you believe that God will only provide good things to you? You see, when Satan talks, he says things like, God is not listening. He doesn't care. He says, God doesn't want to give you what you want, so you've got to take care of yourself. But that's not true. It's a lie. God is listening to you. God does care about you. God does want to give you what you need. God does want to care for you. Even Jesus did this. Praying, I mean, even Jesus prayed and he told us to also do it. You know, when Jesus came to earth, he chose not to have all the resources of heaven at his fingertips. So he prayed, he prayed a lot. And if Jesus required heaven's resources or he required, he was required to ask God, the Father for heaven's resources, to fill his purpose in life, how much more do we need to do the same? And also, prayer is God's way of doing things in these times. We have a part to play in God's plan, and it happens through prayer. Prayer is is us telling God the way we think things ought to be on this earth. And the more we are transformed into God's image, the more we think like God thinks, and the more effective our prayers will be because we'll ask for things that God wants. And the purpose behind the Bible constantly urging us to keep on praying or to pray without ceasing or to pray persistently is because prayer is a way for God to reveal to us how important something is. So my encouragement to you today is pray and keep praying and never stop praying. Stay at it. Jesus stayed at it. He stayed at it all night sometimes. We read about the prophet Ezekiel praying and he stayed at it. He prayed seven times for rain to return to the land. And Paul stayed at it. We read that he prayed three three times for a thorn in the flesh to go away. And persistent prayer, when we keep praying to God, is also a way of refining a request to God. The more we pray, then the more we will think about what ought to be And the better we can ask, especially as the Holy Spirit gives us help. So don't be afraid to ask. God will only answer with good things. We know this because Jesus continues in Matthew chapter 7 to say this. And and he compares um, a request to God in the way that um, uh, children ask requests of their parents. Jesus said this to the crowd in his Sermon on the Mount. He said, you parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? And what's more, not only does God want to shower this this goodness on us, these good gifts on us, 
If you don't know what to say or how to express your thoughts when you pray, the Holy Spirit will intercede and he takes your prayers and your stumbling words and translates them to the Father. Paul talks about this in Romans 8. He says God's Spirit is right alongside helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in us and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs and our aching groans. And if you do know what to pray for, don't be afraid to be specific in your prayers. As James says, you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And and that's in James chapter 4. And in that chapter, James goes on to tell us not, not only do we not receive because we don't ask, but also when we do ask, we can ask with the wrong motivation. So our prayers also need to be sincere and in line with what we bring God glory. And finally, as I close, in your prayers, be expectant. Now, when we talk about being expectant in prayer, that doesn't mean we should presuppose or preempt God's response. Don't do that. Instead, expect a response from God, even though it may not be exactly what you asked for. God does hear you. God does answer. And maybe if we are not Um, we're not aware or we can't see what God is saying or how God is answering our prayers, maybe we're not paying attention. Maybe we're not looking in the right direction because we know that we're not perfect. We can all acknowledge that our motives aren't always pure at times and we can be self-seeking. That's part of our human nature. But we also know that God's character is holy and loving and generous and good. So, with all that in mind, why don't we pray? And as I pray, why don't you pray as well? And maybe as I'm praying, you want to pray something different. You want to use different words. Um, And I I would encourage you to do that. You know, God is pretty smart. And he's pretty adept at listening to two things at once. Remember, there's nothing that he cannot do. So if we all prayed something different all at the same time, God can handle that, God hears that, and God will answer that. So I'm going to pray, and if you want to pray, just pray it loud where you are. But maybe you want to listen to my prayer and maybe agree and amen alongside that, and either way is absolutely fine. So let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are a God who listens, you're a God who cares, you're a God who is generous, and you're a God who has a heart to shower us with good things. Father, would you take the mystery out of prayer for us? Would you help us, Lord, not to be afraid to come before you and ask you for things? And God, as we pray our request to you, would you show us what is right? Would you show us what is in line with your thinking and your will? And Lord, would you change our minds and our hearts so that we are directed and are facing towards you? And Lord, in our prayers, would you show us what you want? And Lord, um, bring us and and align us um, to where you are. Father, our hearts are to see your Holy Spirit move in a powerful way in these times. God, we pray for revival in Falkirk. We ask you to save souls, to usher in, Lord, a kingdom harvest that we've never seen in our lifetime before. And Father, I believe that that is your will for our town, our nation in these times. So God, we earnestly seek your face for these things. God, would you um, turn the hearts of your people towards you? Would you turn our hearts away, Lord, from self-interest or things or places, Lord, that you don't want us um, to be turned towards? God, we repent 
Lord, we ask for forgiveness where we've failed and where we've fallen. And ask, Lord, that you'd pour out grace and mercy, Lord, on your people. And Father, would you open the heavens? And Lord, would you answer our prayers? And would you heal our land? We bless you, Father. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning, we're going to do something a wee bit different. And we're going to do our ministry time on Zoom. So if uh, if you would like some prayer, then come on to Zoom straight away and we are, would love to pray for you. So if if you have um, reacted to anything that you've been hearing this morning, whether it's in worship or whether it was I'm just speaking or even just now, if you can sense something changing in you, whether that could be um, heat in your body, you can just all of a sudden feel this heat come on you, or you, you maybe feel your heart is going faster, or you maybe even in your breathing, you realise your breathing's changed. I would suggest that all of this is the effects of the Holy Spirit. So click on the Zoom button um, right now and we'll go into um, our Zoom call and we'd love to pray for you. Do you know, some of you this morning might just be needing a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Come on the Zoom call. We would love to pray that over you this morning. For others, you would just like more of Jesus in your life. Oh, we would love, so love to pray for you too this morning. So click on the button and come and join us on our Zoom call. And you know, I believe that the healing that Jesus did in the New Testament is available to us right here, right now. And I would love to pray for healing for people this morning. I believe that there's healing, fresh healing for um, people with um, sore joints. So if you've got sore joints this morning... I'd love to pray for you. Click on the Zoom button, come and join us. In particular, if you've got sore um, knee joints, I just get a sense that God wants to heal people or someone with um, sore knees. Um, come on the Zoom call and let us pray for you. I believe there's healing also for people with sore backs. So if you've got a sore back this morning, um, we would love to pray for you. So click on the Zoom button. And also, um, you know, I keep re reading in the Gospels about Jesus healing the, um, the blind and healing the, the deaf and the lame man walking. And I believe that God has empowered us with the same power that Jesus has for healing the sick. So this morning, I believe there is people out there who need, um, there's something going wrong in their eyes and they are, if there's a, a a quick deterioration um, in your eyesight. I would love to pray for restor restoration and healing for your eyes that you will see completely clear again. And also for um, people who are struggling with hearing, and um, maybe that's there's like maybe there's ringing or the there's a f fuzziness and on your you've noticed your hearing is deteriorating. I believe God can restore your hearing to full strength, and I would love love to pray for you this morning. Do you know, we're going to go straight on the Zoom and the first thing we're going to do is go straight in to ministry time. So it's just like the end of our church service and um, where people come forward and you get prayed for one-to-one. -one. You will go into a, a, a breakout room, just you and one other person who will come, you'll, you'll ask what you want prayed for and they will pray for you. Um, so if it's nothing that's been said this morning, if it's not anything that I've called out, that's okay. If you want prayer for anything, come on a Zoom call and um, someone will be delighted to pray with you this morning. Don't hold back. Come, join on the Zoom call, get prayer, and then we can all hang out together, catch up with one another and just have some fun. Okay? Are you ready? Eyes, ears, joints, back pain, more of God in your life. Amazing. Jump on that Zoom call and let's see what the Holy Spirit wants to do this morning.